Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, we're going to build this image scroller using the CSS scroll snap module. So I'm here in VS Code, and you can see on the left side, I have my index.html file. And on the right side, I have my style.css file. And I've already gone ahead and set up some basic DOM elements and some basic styling. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down my code editor a little bit so we can actually see the browser in the background. And let me do a very quick walkthrough of what I have going on so far. So of course here is my title, the Guitar Heroes. And that's the theme of this particular scroller, Legendary Guitarists. Now of course you can use whatever images you want. You can create your own theme. Maybe it could be your favorite movie stars or your favorite over-the-counter medications or whatever. But I'm a guitarist so I like guitar legends. So to make the actual scroller, I've created a div with a classic carousel. I probably should have called it scroller, but oh well. And inside of that div, I have another div with the class of images container. And as you can see, that's holding 10 image tags, pointing to these 10 JPEGs that I have in my images folder in my project directory. Now, as far as my CSS, I won't go through every single one of these properties. You can see them here for your own reference, but I'll point out maybe a couple of the more important things. So here's the basic styling for my carousel div. And you can see I've given it a width of 85 viewport width units, but I've also constrained it to a max width of 900 pixels and set margin to auto just so we can center it in the middle of the viewport. Now this particular box shadow I've actually grabbed from this website here, which I like to use to quickly get a nice box shadow and you can see there's many options. But continuing on with the CSS, Let's look at the images container rule. And this one we're using a display of flex to get all the images to line up horizontally. We're using the gap property to create this little bit of gap, 40 pixels in between each image. And this is important here to use the overflow property. In this case, we're doing horizontal scrolling. So we're doing overflow X and we're giving it a value of auto. And this is necessary to have in order to use the scroll snap stuff that we're going to talk about. And then for each of the images, you can see that I'm giving them a specific height and width here. So of course, at the moment, we don't have any scroll snapping happening just yet. So if I, the user, come in here and start scrolling, and I scroll a little bit and then I let go, you can see nothing snapping. All right, so for example, if I wanted to line this up right at the left of the container, I'd really have to do all this manual fidgeting, which could cause me to lose my mind. So let's jump back into VS Code now, and let's try to make this scrolling experience a little bit nicer for the user. Back here in VS Code, the first thing that we want to do is identify the parent container. And we also want to identify what are going to be the child items inside of that parent container. So here the parent element is going to be this div with the class of images container. And in our CSS, you can see that that's the one that we set up the overflow X property on. And the child items, of course, inside of that container are these images. So it's on the parent element, this div with the class of images container, that we want to apply the scroll snap type property to. So let's come into our rule for the images container. And let's say scroll snap type. And this is going to take two different values. The first one is going to be the axis that we want to scroll along. In this case, we're doing horizontal scrolling. So we're going to do X. If we were doing vertical scrolling, we would do Y. And the next value is going to have to do with the strictness of the scrolling. And for this, we have either an option to do mandatory or proximity. So we're going to start off with mandatory because that's the one that's a little bit more obvious to see. So setting up the scroll snap type, this is half of the equation. Now we also need to come into these child elements, the images. And for these, we need to use the scroll snap align property. And here we have three different possible values. We can do start or we can do center or we can do end. And this is going to define where in the scroll container do we want the child elements to align to. So we'll start off with the value of start. And this way when we scroll, each image should align to the very start of the container, which is here. And now let's try it out. I'm going to give my mouse scroll wheel a quick flick to the right. And you can see that second image, which happens to be Jeff Beck, snaps right to the left side of this container. And here comes David Gilmore from Pink Floyd. Let's give another mouse scroll wheel to the right, and it snaps right in place. Now let's see who we have here, actually. We have Eddie Van Halen. There's Jimi Hendrix, B.B. King, Jimmy Page, Carlos Santana, Steve Vai, and Angus Young. Woohoo! 
Ooh. And notice this very last one, this one's not going to snap to the left side of the container or the start of the container because this is the very last image. There's nothing left to come after it. So before when we set up this scroll snap type property, we said that we could have mandatory or we could have proximity. So let's check out the difference for a second. Let me scroll back to the very beginning of this container. And what you can see with mandatory is that as soon as I scroll to the right with my mouse wheel like this, the very next image snaps right into place. I'll do it one more time. So let's change it to proximity and we'll see what the difference is. So let me scroll back to the beginning. And now I'm going to do the same scrolling with my mouse wheel. And notice that the next image of Jeff Beck doesn't just immediately snap into place. So let me scroll this picture of Dwayne Allman a little bit more to the right and let go. And you can see that Jeff Beck still doesn't snap into place. However, if I go a little bit more around here, well, now Jeff Beck snaps into place. So proximity is not quite as strict as mandatory. And it puts the decision of when to snap a little bit more into the hands of the browser. Now, let's say that we came up with an idea where we wanted to have some kind of decorative bar along the left side of the container, but we still wanted to have the images in the container snap to the proper place in the container. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's come into our HTML file, and within the images container div, let's create a div which we're going to use just to create that decorative bar. Let's give it a class of decoration, and then let's come into our CSS file, and let's create a rule for the class decoration. And let's give this bar a min width of 90 pixels. Let's make it have a height of 281 pixels, which is the height of the container. Let's give it a background color. And for this, I have a hex code, kind of an orange type color, DFA D33. And we don't see it just yet, so let's position it correctly. Let's give it a position sticky, and we'll do left zero. And now you can see it positioned here at the start of the container. So at the moment, we're actually going to have a problem. Before we discuss, though, how we can solve this problem using this next property, let's go ahead and change proximity back to mandatory. And now that we've added this decorative bar, Let's scroll and we'll see what the problem is. So you can see here this next image, which we want to align to the start of the container, is now being kind of buried underneath this decorative bar. And if I scroll again, you can see the same thing happens for each image. So here's where the property called scroll padding comes into play. And we're going to use scroll padding on the parent div. So in the rule for the images container, we'll say scroll padding. And if we left it like this, we could assign different values to the top, the right, the bottom, and the left padding, just like you do with your normal CSS padding property. But since we know that we just want to deal with the left padding, we'll do scroll padding left. And to compensate for that decoration div, which has a width of 90 pixels, let's give a scroll padding left value of 90 pixels. Now when we save, scroll back to the beginning. Notice what happens now when I scroll to the right. And now you can see that Jeff Beck here is very neatly aligned to the right of this bar because we gave it that padding left of 90 pixels. And then I'll scroll again, and you can see that each image is now properly lined up. Now, if you remember, when we set up this scroll snap align property, we said that it could also have values of center and end. We've just been doing start so far, but let's now try end first, and we'll see what the difference is. So let's scroll back to the very first image. And now we'll scroll to the right. And what you can see is that this next image here of Jeff Beck is snapping to the end of the container. And I'll do the next one. And you can see the same thing for this image. So now let's try center. And let's scroll back. And we'll scroll to the right. And now you can see that this image of Jeff Beck is neatly placed in the center of the container. Of course, now that we have our padding on the left, our container is really from here to here. So I'll scroll a little bit more. And now this one's in the center, and so on and so forth. Now there's one more additional property that we want to look at in this video, and that's called the scroll margin. Let me show you what it does. First of all, let's set our scroll snap align back to start. All right, in order to see what scroll margin does, let's target one of these images. Let's do the one of Eddie Van Halen in particular. So to make this easy, let's just give it a class of Van Halen, like that. And then we'll come into our CSS, and let's target that Van Halen div. And let's give it a scroll margin. And again, just like scroll padding, we can set the margins for top, right, bottom, and left. But here we just want to do the left, so we can specify scroll margin left. 
And let's give it something like 70 pixels just so we can see what it does. So let's save and let's go back. All right, and let's scroll to the right and notice how Jeff Beck snaps right to the right of this decorative bar. Dave Gilmore snaps right to the edge of this decorative bar. And let's scroll again. Here comes Eddie Van Halen. And take a look at that. Notice now that we have a gap between the right edge of that decorative bar and the start of Eddie Van Halen. And if we look, yep, we can see it's 70 pixels. So that's what scroll margin allows us to do. It allows us to affect the child elements and kind of tweak their snap points. See, like we could go into Jimi Hendrix and let's give him a class of Hendrix. And let's create a rule for Hendrix. And let's say for him, let's give a scroll margin left of, we'll do something really obvious. Let's say 130 pixels. And now let's see what happens when we scroll to him. All right, so Jeff Beck snaps right to the edge. Dave Gilmore right to the edge. Eddie Van Halen is offset by 70 pixels. And Jimi Hendrix is offset by 130 pixels. So now you know that you can use scroll margin to tweak where the snapping occurs. By the way, I have a new course available on using GSAP and Scroll Trigger to really enhance your websites. In the course, we dive into a concept called scrolly telling. And if you haven't heard about scrolly telling, you're definitely going to want to check it out. You'll find the link down below in the description and the comments section. Now, if you haven't done so yet, also subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments down below what other topics you'd like to see covered. See you next time.